The November update to Final Fantasy XI brought with it the master level system and with that, the raising of the sub job levels beyond the half cap of our current main that we've known since the, the dawn of Final Fantasy XI. We can now get up to level 53 and presumably more of those levels are coming. What the cap will be, whether it's you know 60, 68, 74, 75, 99, we don't know yet, but it's given uh, quite a bit of thought to, to who's gonna come out on top at the end of all this. So far, we've been super excited about what this changes and how we can play our jobs, the different sub jobs that are useful, the overall strength of each job. But as we've been kind of approaching it, thinking about it, like I was talking about last week in, uh, in the stream and my last video, I feel like there are gonna be some jobs that kind of lose. Let's talk about it. Alright guys, so welcome back. If you're new here, this is Unfair Games where we talk a lot about Final Fantasy XI, a little bit about Final Fantasy XIV, and other MMOs and nostalgia that just get us going every day. But uh, this new update has changed Final Fantasy XI pretty significantly. And uh, so far it's been all hype, right? But we were talking about it. One of my main jobs, my actually highest, you know, master, the only job that I have mastered level to like all the way to the stars above the name was summoner it was one of the first jobs i got 75 it's it's like one of my favorites but i don't know if i love it now looking forward with all these exciting new changes coming about not that that summoner is going to be in a bad place summoner is incredibly strong incredibly useful for a lot of content the ability to throw a high damage enemy out that like doesn't affect your HP at all. It can just die. You can bust out a new one. Is incredibly power in 11, powerful in 11, and always has been. And I'm sure will continue to be in the future as we continue to grow in strength. But the new sub jobs for every scenario that isn't just the sub job being a level 99 full strength job along with the job that you're leveling, which it could still be. I'm excited to see if that happens. I think Summoner in particular loses out. Summoners always struggled because the main strength of the job has always come from the pets. It's its, it's strength and its greatest weakness. Jobs like Bard that cannot buff a pet at all are meaningless in a, a party of summoners. And likewise, one summoner in a party where the Bard is buffing everybody else is going to fall behind a little bit because it's not scaling with that Bard at all. But this, uh, this kind of comes to play with the sub job too. Right now, Red Mage is the sub job of choice for Summoner with occasionally Scholar being useful as well. Mostly because uh, the ability to convert and refresh yourself in a moment of need are more critical than anything else because just having more MP to do more Avatar blood packs is the best thing you could possibly do for yourself. Nothing else can improve the strength of the Avatars and uh, very little provides enough benefit to outweigh just more MP at your disposal. That's always one of the, the biggest benefits. Now, Scholar with Sublimation is in incredibly useful as well and gives you a little bit more utility with spells, but for the most part, anything you're doing that's difficult, Scholar Sub isn't gonna make or break uh, your, your day in terms of its utility spells, so Red Mage it is. But I was looking at it, I'm like, all right, so we get to level like sub job level 60, 74, 75, and I don't really see that changing. I don't know what job could provide a unique and powerful benefit to the avatars enough to make it worth changing and, and losing convert and refresh. Uh, Red Mage will continue to get like a, a little bit better with some more spells and utility. I haven't really, really looked though. What kind of healing spells do we get? I don't think it's gonna be anything massively different to be honest. So I, I see Summoner kind of remaining the same unless they do something to upgrade Summoner's strength in it itself over the course of the master level system. Obviously, as you get master levels, you gain strength just because of the master levels, but uh, I mean, something beyond that. Um, I don't know, maybe the, the avatars being able to create umbral and astral uh, skill chains, but an interesting problem because, uh, you know, I look at like Corsair sub and they, they can buff at certain levels, they'll be able to buff the, the pet's strength, which is neat. Uh, but I can't imagine with Corsair being the sub job that it'll make up for the loss of just, again, the raw MP that Red Mage sub can provide with mainly convert. 
So it's an interesting problem. And that was my like, you know, initial reaction. I was like, ah, oh, it sounds like a bit of a bummer. And I've talked about this. So I'm, I'm kind of focused on Blue Mage. And then beyond that, will probably be Puppet Master and Monk, which I'm super pumped about. I think it's going to be a ton of fun. It's one thing I've always loved about 11. As updates come along, I can kind of just shift my focus and, and change to working on something else that is more exciting with the new updates or the new content or the, the changes that affect how we play the game because your character isn't tied to a specific job. It's tied to however many jobs you level. I love that about 11. I'm not upset about this at all, even though, of course, they did do it to Summoner, my highest level job. No big deal. It's fine. No, but I am pumped. And uh, but I, I was starting to think I was like, all right, well, you know, Summoner's got a little bit of a a problem there. But is Summoner uniquely in that position? Because the other pet jobs, Dragoon, Pup, and Beastmaster, all are in their own right. Strong, physical, you know, melee jobs as well. Dragoon being the least affected by by the, you know, nobody, nobody goes on Dragoon, they're like, can you please spend some rolls to increase my pet strength? No, uh, that's not the purpose at all. Beastmaster is an inter interesting position because the the beasts uh the beasts beastmaster is always in kind of a weird place with uh, the 99 119 content because it's incredibly powerful in certain aspects and kind of lacking in others um and i'll be curious to see how you know the increase in sub job options and, and overall strength of the job kind of can change that so i don't know how beast will continue to evolve it's always been one of the weirder jobs for me it's hard to predict how people will use it but i, I think it'll come out probably fine because overall the Beastmaster can still gain strength on its own with changes to the subjob that are, are valuable to the overall strength of the job. So like as different subjobs become viable, the Beast can adapt to that and I think it'll be great. Uh, Puppet Master I think is going to be in a little bit of weaker position. It still has the same benefits of like, yeah, as, as different subjobs become viable, uh, definitely can adapt to that. But hand to hand's always been kind of weird with subjob options. like. No matter how much you change ninja sub, it's never going to be useful for pup um, in terms of gaining strength. Like, yeah, Utsu's Emmy is always going to be handy, but that's basically it. And there's nothing that can, you know, no benefit of dual wield or anything. So you're kind of, you're already sort of stuck and it doesn't have two handed. It's always, it's often its own thing. It's not single handed or, or, or two handed uh, weapon. So you don't get the benefits of either dual wielding or samurai sub. Uh, it's just kind of hand to hand, off in its own little corner. But I think Pub will be fine. Puppet Master has always been been very strong since the changes and the new attachments. Uh, there will always be a purpose for Pup. It'll always still be kind of weird. You'll have to adjust your party strategy around the Pup. That's been its its strength and its weakness. It can do so much, but ultimately the automaton is limited in what it can mentally achieve and work around. So you have to work around. The puppet and that's not going to change but i do think it'll be in an okay space with uh changing sub job options and you know as as like different subs become better and more viable puppet master can adjust and and gain value from that and it's not that like summoner can't adjust i just don't think anything's going to change i don't think any other jo sub job will be more viable um maybe white mage sub for utility uh, again scholar sub for utility and stuff but for most of the content, the way that Summoner is used, having more MP is almost always more valuable. So I'll be curious to see if that changes. But I was thinking about the other kind of, like some of the losers. I hate to say this, but uh, I think Thief will be in a weird place. I think a lot of the, the dual wielding jobs are gonna be in a bit of a weird place. Um, because over time, I think Ninja Sub might drift away. I, I, what level does uh, does Dancer Sub get dual wield? I don't even remember. Obviously, the dual wield be a little bit slower, but the the amount of dual wield you can get by gear and haste and everything is insane. So I, don't, I think we can make up for that with uh, all the other benefits that like Dancer Sub, like including just damage benefits, uh, we'll start getting. But I don't know. I'll be curious to see what happens there. But Thief is kind of in a weird spot right now. Um, and I'm, you know. It, as with any other job, an incredibly powerful thief can do incredible things in Final Fantasy XI. There's no doubt about that. But as far as I know, the weapon skills are, are kind of in a kind of strange place. Sneak attack and trick attack are like still nice, but in the days of like you get TP every three to four seconds, firing off a trick attack or a sneak attack that's dependent on positioning every 30, you know, 45 seconds, depending on merits and how you're staggering those. 
I don't think it's a game changer. It used to be incredible. <laughs> Sneak Attack and Trick Attack used to be my favorite part of the game, and I'm so upset. But I was just thinking about like the changes, and I think that those kind of those jobs. Wait, does Steve Navely get dual wield now? It might. I don't even remember. But I just think it's going to be in a weird spot with some of these updates. I think two handers are going to be in the best place in the near future. I think as uh, as we get higher, some of the stuff that other uh, competitive competitive sub jobs get will make um, the dual wielders kind of come back into play in the the single hander weapons. But it, I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. It's exciting. It's so exciting. But I was just thinking about it, and I was like, one of my favorite aspects. And we talk about this all the time. And sorry, I'm just like rambling. It's just like one of those kind of days uh, about Final Fantasy XI and MMOs of that era was that the game was not perfectly balanced. Certain jobs were better at different things, different kind of content. Sometimes it was battle related, sometimes it wasn't. One of White Mage and Black Mage's best benefits was purely that they could travel better around the world with teleports and warps. Not useful at all in combat, but critical for the experience of being in Van and Deal and uh, could literally change how you played the game in terms of making money and, and all sorts of random stuff like that. So, I love that about it. I don't want the game to be perfectly balanced. I think Final Fantasy XIV in its current state is incredibly well balanced, although I haven't seen the numbers of Ed Walker. I'm sure they'll continue to adjust. But it, it makes everything feel kind of homogenized at the end of the day. Outside of combat, there's very little that separates a lot of the classes. Some some of them have a little bit of like, you know, ninjas teleport 20 feet and stuff like that, but nothing, nothing game changing. But I miss the era where like jobs were drastically different and you would get excited about leveling Black Mage so that you could warp somebody else home. That was just like a, a cool thing that only Black Mages could do. White Mage could teleport around. It was, it was unique in that way. And I think we're getting back to this place of like, with these changes, there are gonna be clear winners and losers. And we'll see if, you know, Square Enix continues to update and tweak and adjust jobs to make them uh, as even as possible. And one of the biggest, uh, you know, difference makers, the the thing that evens everybody out is is ultimately incredibly powerful gear. Uh, different jobs will get into a place of, of strength at different tiers of gear. Like I think Warrior, with like a, a nice little like medium 119 set, you can be pretty pretty tough. <laughs> but like some jobs, you really don't start coming into your own. Like Ninja's in a weird place where even Ninja at like top tier gear can put out incredible numbers. But even like medium-ish gear, it's just kind of okay. It's it's kind of funny that way, but I, we're gonna see a ton of that imbalance between the jobs and I'll be serious, interested to see how they start tweaking stuff once we get into these higher sub jobs and it changes everything. Cause they've, they've tried to tweak a few things over the past few years and it's had pros and cons and, and wins and losses, but like, I don't know. I'm just very curious to see where this all goes. But so I don't want to say that I'm not excited about their being in balance. I like the idea of their being in balance. I think 11 thrives on it with some jobs being better at certain things than others. The risk is that some jobs just aren't really very good at many things anymore. <laughs> like, and I and I hope that's not the case. I hope there's still value for those jobs and figuring out what's going on. But let me know what you think. Who are going to be in your mind the clear winners and losers? at the different tiers of subjob levels, 60, 74, 75. I, th these are the most uh, likely scenarios, I think, in my head. It's either gonna stop at 60, 68, which is the current cap of how high you can search for a master level. It ends up being like, what, 99 or something, which would mean 68. Um, 74, right under 75 in all the marital abilities. I think I think there's like some credence to that, that that's a possible situation. 75. Just the classic cap kind of brings back some of that feeling of the good old days or uh, straight up to 99. They don't stop at all. And that'll be uh, very interesting to see. So let me know who you guys think is uh, going to be on top, who's going to be on bottom. Is everything, everything going to kind of balance itself out pretty well um, in the near future? Or are you not even interested? Is this too much? It's taking you too far from the classic Final Fantasy XI that made you fall in love with the game in the first place. I'll be curious to hear what you think. Uh, otherwise, keep on the lookout for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace. All right, on our question. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Um, all right, without checking my bazaar. Starbump.
He's right. <laughs> He's right. He's right. <laughs> I was gonna say, what drawing 